How are you guys doing? Josh here with Ohio Fish Rescue. Now while we were in here playing Tetris with all these fish tanks, Steven from SC Aquatics was outside doing some work on the Bellagio tank stand, which I'll show you guys in just a second. What were you doing, bud? Oh, cutting some steel. <laughs> <laughs> so he's actually almost done with this entire stand. He's making the last cut here. This is the last cut, That's right? That's the last cut. Then the whole top will pop off. So we can go ahead and give you a little look-see here. Cut all the way down. So our plan is we're going to go ahead. Well, Steven's going to. He's going to take the angle grinder here, and he's going to make this flat. And then we're going to cut three foot out of the, these poles. And uh, we're going to leave 18 inches up from the bottom. Plus the two inches here, the stands will be 20 inches tall for the Bellagio tanks to sit against the wall in the fish room here. As you guys know, we moved all of these tanks in here. So this is cleared out for one and a half of the tank. So they're basically going to go right in against this wall, stick out three foot, and they'll be covering this whole entire wall. Now, Steven's up here doing work on the stands to help pay for this 2,000 gallon, which is going to him. So uh, we'll be needing to get that to his house pretty soon here, and so we can have the Bellagio tanks moved in. So that is the last piece of the puzzle. we got to drain this tank, and we've got to get it back up on rollers and onto a trailer. Not looking forward to that whatsoever. <laughs> cut through actually he's got a little, little tiny spot. little spot right on this inside edge but that is what you deal with he is using a skill saw with a steel de demon blade on it for the circular saw cuts through steel like it's butter just not welds <laughs> all righty my cameraman just can't get him out but uh we already took the uh top of the stand off now steven can go and basically chop all these legs off then we can clean everything up and we can go ahead and weld <laughs> cameraman's here there we go <laughs> so if you, you guys can see here he basically cut right through the the, the weld so he's got to come back with an angle grinder clean this up, up a bit and then right where he's going to cut these at 18 inches from the ground they're going to be cut, cut off flat and then we're going to basically join the bottom to the top again and then he's got to well he's going to <laughs> have at it and uh, have some fun you know that's a lot of welding. There's 18 oh. bars, so he's not going to be jumping around this weld, that weld, oh. here, there, all over I the place. I figured we'd try super glue. Super glue? <laughs> <laughs> here we have it. Steven's back at work. He's now working with the angle grinder. He's almost got this done, but he's uh, flattening all of these out so he can go ahead and get to welding. So looking at the stands here, Steven definitely chewed off a little bit more than he can handle. He said he was going to get both stands cut down and re-welded. Well, he didn't even get one done, but he is coming back next weekend to go ahead and finish up the welds. He got all these grinded down, so this piece is prepped to be re-welded. He's going to come back and just chop these bars off and then uh, start welding this stand. Hopefully by next weekend we'll have one stand done, and then we can start working on moving at least one tank in while we're working on the second stand and moving this 2000 out. So coming back in here to the pool room or the monster pond room, we uh, have a big mess in here to clean up of course, but uh, the, the, the boys that helped us, I can't thank them enough. Everyone came together and made this move happen. I wouldn't have done it without you guys. So I just want to say an extra big thank you to everyone who came and helped out OFR move these tanks around your, your your support and your help is greatly appreciated I just I can't thank you guys enough it was just insane to, to see how much support we actually get and we actually pulled this big giant move off but I want to take you guys over 
and basically show you the, the, the plans for these tanks. But as we're walking past, we've got these two skimmers we're, we got to get rid of, these two big tillers, and these were all the pumps for the Bellagios that were sitting on the stands that can no longer go there. But as you can see, we're putting together the uh, living room area again so we can sit in the pool room and enjoy. Here goes the two big giant sumps that came off each Bellagio tank. Each sump is uh, 4 by 30 by 3. And these are big, huge acrylic sumps with a lot of media in them. Of course, there are two of them. But coming over here, you see the tanks on the wall. So we are still playing with the positioning just a tad bit. But uh, as far as this tank goes, I already cut out the, the bulkhead and did the work. I cut out the corner overflow. And now I just have to patch that hole in the bottom of the tank. Now you guys can see on this left side, there was a bulkhead here. I was gonna screw in a 90 and use this as my overflow, but that idea might be scratched. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this one. I'm gonna take this one out and cover it. I'm gonna pop the bulkhead over to this right side so my plumbing's coming out on this side and it can come down and I'll tell you what we're doing with the plumbing here in a sec, but that allows me to move this tank over a few more inches as well as this tank. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this bulkhead here and that big bulkhead up there. And then I'm gonna move, that should give me enough room. Hopefully with just the first one I'll have enough room, but I might need to do this tank think, as well, which that would force me to move the overflow to the backside. And then I can move this tank over just enough to where I can slide it back into position and it won't be sticking out as much because when you're walking in, in the room because of that beam that's basically right up there it's sitting in front of it so we can get this back another four or five inches so the tank won't be protruding out as much so now you guys are wondering how we're going to filter these and all this some of you might know because i talked about it in a previous video but uh yeah so we're, we're basically going to take the pump that's running these waterfalls right here. We're gonna go ahead and pump up to here that's uh, eight to 10,000 gallons per hour. So I'm gonna pump them up and tee it off and come into these three tanks. It's gonna basically be a pass through system with a lot of flow and then they're gonna overflow back down and then run the waterfalls again. So it's no additional pump and I get to have these three tanks on the same water as the monster pond. I think that that is pretty ingenious right there, but uh, we will still, however, have uh, a little bit, bit of bio and mechanical filters on e each tank like I do with every tank. So if that power ever kicks off, there's still filtration, or if that pump ever kicks off, there's still filtration on each tank to keep it sparkling clean, and there's going to be no debris settling on the bottom of the, these tanks. So as far as stocking goes, I was thinking of this 1,000 gallon to be a bass tank, which I think that would be pretty cool. Um, this set 700, oh, and of course with the bass, I'm gonna have the big Adonis Pleco in there with them. And then of course, this 700 gallon, I was thinking of uh, being the grow out tank. Well, not right now, but eventually for another Goliath Tigerfish and the, the, the big Armadas, and it, it'll be like a species tank, which should be pretty cool. But as of right now, we just have the, the Armada, so we're thinking of bumping him up to a larger tank. But uh, yeah, we don't have a Goliath Tiger Fish at the, the moment. And then this 500 gallon cube, as you guys know, my dad is going to Connecticut this weekend. It is finally happening, and he's going to be picking up Pittsburgh's girlfriend. So I figured I can turn this cube into the MBU puffer tank, and then I'm going to use Pittsburgh's cube now for the Abonite. So both of them fish get an upgrade and then there, there'll be two puffers in th this tank. Now, uh, you know, sometimes puffers won't really get along, but we're gonna go ahead and see how it goes. If we have to split them up, then we will deal with them at that time. So uh, moving on, we have a bunch of rescues coming up. Of course, you've got, got the Connecticut trip, which you guys will see all of that happen. And then I've also got a pretty cool rescue that I'll be videoing next week, actually. And we are going to 
pick up four fish. So you guys are gonna want to stay tuned to see how this uh, big plan comes together with this uh, showroom here out in the Monster Pond room. I really like it myself. I hope you guys are liking the content as well. So I thank you guys for stopping in to watch today's video. If you guys want to see more crazy adventures with the Ohio Fish Rescue, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay fishy, my friend.